Hi there, Viv. This is, uh, I'm Andy Jarvis. I'm here with Christoph Bouquet uh, from Dahlberg Data Insights. Uh, this is a, a little bit of a, a, a flash Facebook Live that we're doing, but I wanted to interview, interview Christoph about uh, mobile data, right? I, I'm, I'm, uh, I read about this. I see use of mobile data uh, uh, in my work. I'm, I'm fascinated by it. I, I, it's, it's truly incredible what you can say with these things. And, but to be honest, it's like a little bit like uh, like like the dark arts for people that work in agricultural research. We 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 love it, but we don't know how how on earth to use it, leverage it, uh, and uh, incorporate it into what we do. I was thrilled by the presentation that Christoph made on on Wednesday here in the, the Big Data Platform uh, Convention, and we were uh, it, it just it was like a one on one. It was just step by step what what uh, mobile data is, how it's generated, where it comes from. Uh, and what you can do with it. So I wanted to just like quickly do a little interview and go through that for 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 your uh, viewing pleasure, and, um, and and hopefully more people will 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 uh, will see that you you know this isn't actually all that difficult to uh, to to use and leverage and and do great things with. It. So thanks, Christoph, for coming on. Um, you... this, yeah. Oh, there we go. So first question. I mean, what I loved about the presentation, you just kind of explained what data, what mobile data is. How is it? What's what? What are we when we're using a phone? Uh, when someone, a farmer or, or or somebody is is out there using a phone, what what data is getting getting captured, and and how can we make sense of that? Yeah. Okay. So that's a, that's a tough one to start with, but uh, I will I will try to to make sure that it's clear for everyone. So basically, uh, when Dalbert Data Insights uh, use telecom data is mostly uh, what we call the call detail records, as well as the mobile money transactions. There are some other sources of data, but those are the most insightful, especially when it comes to international development. Um, what is a CDR? Uh, a CDR is just a log that is collected by an operator in order to bill at the end of the month or to bill directly if you are in, uh, in prepaid or postpaid, depending on this. Anyway, so the thing is that every time that you give a call, that you send an SMS or that you use uh, some data, you are connecting to the closest antenna. So the antenna which is on the ground and which is the closest to, to, to you and your mobile phone. So it's good also to know that all those transactions are actually geolocated. So we know when someone is giving an SMS, a call, or using data, or uh, using mobile money uh, to send uh, money or peer-to-peer -peer exchange, uh, we know where this transaction happens. So this is very important, especially when you do, want to do mapping, when you want to understand what are the patterns in, uh, in a country. So a very concrete example is, for example, uh, what we call the, the, the people move. When we want to follow the movement of the people, we can, for example, looking at those logs uh, at the level of an entire day and see that in the morning, for example, you uh, switch on your mobile phone, you gave a call in the morning, uh, and we see that you were in the countryside uh, at that moment. And then at noon, we see that you are sending an SMS and you are at your uh, business place, and we see that it's another place, it's another antenna that is used, it's another uh, location. And then maybe in the evening, uh, we see that you are back in the place where you were in the morning. So, so we know, so you, you've got the, the geolocation, so exactly. you can know exactly where a phone is, and that's for any time that data is being transferred or just during a call? Um, so it's, it's really when a transaction uh, is done, and there is a bit more uh, complicated uh, data behind, because actually uh, your mobile phone is always uh, pinging to the antenna just for example to give you the information of the level of the signal, right? But uh, here we are really talking about the logs that are registered and recorded right. by the operator when a transaction is, is passed by. It's the same when you receive a call, you are also noticed in those logs that you are receiving a call. So we can see also uh, the direction of okay. those transactions, right? And then you also, when you do uh, mobile money, that's mm -hmm. another transaction. Exactly. So the mobile money transactions are actually uh, stored in another uh, database or in another place, let's say, 
of the telecom operator network. Uh, so it's separated, but we tend to actually combine it to feed our models or to build insights uh, for our application and our end users. But as you may know, for example, Mbesa here, uh, it's really all about, for example, when someone is paying a merchant, when people are exchanging money via peer-to-peer, -peer, or uh, people are just cashing in or cashing out, all those transacts transactions sorry are recorded and we also see the nature of the transaction okay so we know the amount we know uh, who it's uh, uh, going from and to it's an anonymized though right I mean privacy exactly. is, is, is respected yeah so it, it's a, it's a big big question and, and thank you mark uh, <laughs> the, or dear mark Zuckerberg bringing this uh, more and more those days um, yeah the privacy behind this it's a, it's a whole topic. Um, when we access the data, it's already anonymized by the telecom operator. So we never access data that are not anonymized. So that's the that's first point which is very important to get. Another one important is that we never communicate any insights at the level of the subscriber. So all what we communicate are aggregates. So for example, we can say that in this part, this district of the country, uh, 1,000 people uh, send money to this kind of merchant during noon and 1 p.m. That's, for example, the type right. of, of insights we build, but we never go till the level of the subscriber. Okay, so you get all of this, this great data. You, you showed a nice example there. Can you talk, walk us through that, how you're using this in, for pastoralism? Yes, so it's, it's uh, actually a good example in, in one of uh, our last uh, use case for telecom data applied to uh, agriculture and food security. Actually, uh, in Uganda, for those uh, who know that region, Karamoja, it's, it's northeast, uh, most of the farmers are agropastoralists in the sense that they both uh, grow crops and they also uh, keep livestock. And during the drought season or during the, the dry season, they actually uh, graze their cattle in the region to find uh, greener grass. So there are in, in, in this region what we call seasonal migration patterns. So the people are moving around in the region. And uh, it's actually very interesting to have a look to this when it comes to, to, to see if those patterns are consistent over time, if uh, they are triggered uh, more frequently than, than previous year or earlier or later. And this is really something that we can actually, uh, let's say, bring more information and insights into thanks to the telecom data. Because right. as I was saying, we can follow what is the move patterns of those people across an entire year. So we can look at the movement of a person uh, at the level of the day, as I was explaining before. There are many use cases around smart cities, for example, with, with, such a, with such an approach. But then when it comes to migration, we are looking at patterns on a longer basis. So for example, we look if you are moving from home location from a week to another one, or from three days to, to the next three days. Yeah, but it almost, I mean, not, not in real, real time, but I mean, in, in time to be able to respond, right? So there's all sorts of interesting things you could do from management then to, to, you know, in terms of managing that pasture and supporting communities during droughts and things like that. That's, fa so that's fascinating. So last question. Um, so, you know, we're all enthused. We all want to use this stuff. I mean, what, what, how do you access this kind of data? What, what, are, the, what are the means of, of, of leveraging this? I mean, we work with uh, Dalbo Data Insights yeah, exactly. as well, right? But, I will preach my church and, and say that you need to partner with us. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, the, the, the operators make this, this data available for anybody, how does it work? Okay, so um, there are different uh, approach, again, it's, it's, a, it's a good and, and broad question at the same time. How Dalberg Data Insights is usually uh, working, it's through a very, um, I would say, concrete and defined partnership with the operator. So all of this needs to go to a, a very tough legal process you need to prove that your company is uh, completely reliable and completely aligned with, with all the, the legal uh, challenge that are behind uh, such, a, such a work. So uh, after this partnership, when, when everything is, is uh, I would say, mature and ready, 
very concretely, what we do is that we bring a server, or a machine, a physical machine, within the telecom operator premises that we connect to the data center, and then we get access to their data. And then from abroad or remotely, we can access this machine via VPN, for example, so it's fully secure, and we completely rely on the, the security and all the firewall and infrastructure of the mobile network operator. So this is okay. uh, the very state-of-the-art way to do. In this case, you don't work with the cloud, because uh, telecom operators are, are not doing that, they are not bringing those data on the cloud. It's really in their data center that everything is happening. Right, so you take the algorithm to the database exactly. to, to protect privacy. Exactly, so all the computations are really run on, on this uh, computer that is set up uh, in, the, in the data center, and we access uh, to this computer from trying to a VPN, yeah. Okay, wonderful. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Christophe. I hope that explained yeah. explained this to other dummies like me out there. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, and I think we're going to see a lot of a lot more uses of this. You know, this was one of the first examples that I had seen of of it being used in in agriculture. There's great examples of using it for mapping poverty and all sorts of things. And I think we're going to see lots and lots more. And uh, and and thanks for explaining it to me. Thank you. See you. <laughs>